what is the greatest fast food chicken sandwich? So, this is a little harder. You got Popeyes, you got Chick fil A, you got Wendy's, you got McDonald's, you got. <laughs> A24 is calling Civil War at a 25.7 million opening, opening largely fueled by Democrat and liberal moviegoers, but with overly performing business in some red state regions like the South and Southwest. Screen Engine, Comscore's uh, post track polled the Civil War attendees' politics, reporting that 22% considered them liberal, 19% were Democrats, 11% considered themselves moderate, whereas uh, registered Republicans were six percent. Evangelical Christians were six percent, and politically conservative folks were five percent. Showed up as a minority. The markets that overperformed were L.A., San Francisco, Washington D.C., Phoenix, Austin, San Diego, and Denver. But then there were smaller regional markets that rallied, including El Paso, Waco, Oklahoma City, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Charlottesville, Virginia. As we told you, South, South Central, and West were the best regions for the A24 release, which follows journalists chronicling a divided, violent America. Rival Studios concur with A24's projection for the Alex Garland movie, which is both the biggest opening ever for the filmmaker, previously being 2018's Annihilation and 11 million, and the New York City-based studio. This is after an 8.76 million Saturday, which was plus 11% from Friday's pure 8 million, not including 2.9 million previews, a very good result. Many are impressed with how A24 got this divided movie across the finish line with a great result. However, I'm told they did spend on P&A on their most expensive movie of all time, which cost more than 50 million with around 20 million in marketing. The comps here are old, but the opening for Civil War beats other nation and peril political thrillers, including the wide break of Catherine Bigelow's Zero Dark Thirty, Oliver Stone's World Trade Center, going way back, 1998 martial law New York City movie, The Siege, all unadjusted for inflation. Some uh, rivals sniped that the movie is front-loaded. We shall see. A24 is expected to keep a simple, uh, sizable portion of IMAX, and these picks do a 3, 3.5 uh, multiple of the box office. 400 IMAX auditoriums rang up. 4.2 million of Civil War's weekend, or 16.5% of the overall opening. Leading up to the release, IMAX did a re-release of Garland's Ex Machina with a first look at Civil War overall. PLF and IMAX repped close to half the weekend's money. AMC Lincoln Square, New York City, Civil War was the top grossing location, and now at 130 k Post track also shows that there was indeed walk-up business with 64% of Civil War moviegoers buying tickets the same day. Those buying tickets, 27% identified as frequent moviegoers buying tickets on opening weekend. Some 46% of those said they attended due to the subject matter and plot, whereas 39% cited the genre. 31% said, quote, it looked fun and entertaining. Only 17% bought tickets because of the cast. Interesting stat, 48% of those who watched Civil War are curious about a sequel. Which I could... Now that... Oh. <clears throat> We were talking about that. I could honestly see a sequel being made in regards to this. And don't worry, we will have a, our review of Civil War coming out very soon. Either tomorrow or uh, Thursday. Moving the needle in regards to marketing was Kirsten Dunn's presence across social media, the actress counting 2.9 million of followers per relish mix. In addition to pushing Civil War, the actress took female fans down memory lane on Kelly Clarkson, yelling, Bring It On, and Spider-Man. In addition to the South by Southwest world premiere, which fueled positive reviews, A24 held LA and New York City special screening with influencers across entertainment, media, and politics. The LA premiere saw Ryan Johnson and Edgar Wright attending with the latter tweeting, Quote, Alex Garland's urgent and intense civil war grabs you by the throat and forces you to watch. A vivid, near-future shock through a subjective lens. See it large and loud, it's powder keg cinema. On social, A24 did 
did a what kind of America are you green toy soldier generator. There was also a big splash for Civil War in Times Square. But despite the great business for a movie like Civil War, the overall marketplace at 77.4 million, still dragged behind last year's Super Mario Brothers Mojo at minus 48%, but is only behind 2019's same April weekend at minus 31%. So to recap the uh, box office results, at the top we got Civil War. Number two is followed uh, Godzilla. And Kong, three is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, four was Kung Fu Panda, five was Doom Part 2, six was Monkey Man, seven was the first Omen, eight is the long game, nine is the re-release of Shrek 2, ten is Sugar August Detour D-Day, apologies for butchering that. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, uh, what you thought about this week's box office results and uh, let us know have you watched civil war let us know in the comments and of course give us a thumbs up if you like our videos and now on to our next topic original blair witch project star has blasted the new movie from lionsgate and bluehouse blair witch project one of the most well-known staples of the horror genre is getting a, re a reboot Although the original found footage featured ACU 2 sequels, Lionsgate and Bloomhouse are now teaming up on a complete reboot of the franchise. It's the first movie in a new pack between the outlets. Though the news might excite fans of the cult classic, some of the actors involved in the original picture aren't especially thrilled, including actor Joshua Leonard. Leonard took to Instagram this past week, showing a passionate response to the news, rallying against the studio's treatment of himself and his co-stars for the original film. Saying, quote, so this is my face on a press release for a film being made by two major studios, both I've worked for, both I respect. The weird part is that I didn't know anything about it until a friend sent me a congrats screenshot yesterday. My frustration is compounded because I've been trying to get Lionsgate to engage for over a month about a Blair Witch Project charity screening I'm putting together for O Positive Fence to raise money for artists without health care, and no one will get back to me. Leonard then went on to a series of statements showing just how much money he and his co-stars have missed out on, despite the film's wide-ranging success. 1999... Excuse me. In 1999, uh, BWP's OG distributor claimed to have released the most pro profitable independent film ever. Bought for $1 million, grossed $250 million, while internally they told us they were actually losing money from marketing expenses. So we might wind up owing them money, he added, because we used our real names in the first film, the studio claimed copyright. We had to take them to federal court to win our names back. A Hollywood insider told the press that we actors were paid $4 million as a buyout for our ownership points, while in reality we made three hundred k and never saw another dime. After buying a car and paying off his student loans, Mike was back moving furniture within 12 months of the release, while still on magazine covers. Although the actor says he's excited, fans are still thrilled with the film after the better part of three decades. His frustration with Hollywood's treatment of the franchise is something that continues to upset him. Quote, I'm so proud of our little punk rock movie, and I love the fans who keeps the flames burning, but at this point it's 25 years of disrespect from the folks pocketed the lion's share of the profits from our work. And that feels both icky and classless. You can actually check out the Blair Witch Project on the Roku channel, while its 2016 Blair Witch follow-up can be seen on Tubi. And now on to our next topic. Star Trek uh, Strange New World Season 4 has been ordered. And it's time to say goodbye to Star Trek Lower Decks. Ahead of the third installment, premiere in 2025, Paramount's Star Trek Strange New Worlds has received an early season four renewal. And this announcement comes after the sci fi adventure spinoff had wrapped its 10 episode second season run last August. Strange New Worlds, starring Anson Mount, Rebecca Ramajan, Ethan Peck, Jess Bush, Christina Chong, Paul Wesley and Carol Kane is based on the years Captain Pike 
and the helm of the USS Enterprise. In addition, CBS Studios has also confirmed that its hit animated comedy, Star Trek Lower Decks, will be ending its run after the upcoming fifth season, which is currently still in production. It is scheduled to premiere sometime this fall on Paramount. Lower Decks features the voice of Tony Newsom, Jack Quaid, Eugene Cornero, Don Lewis, Jerry O'Connell. The animated comedy centers around on the support crew serving on one of Starfleet's least important ships, the USS Cerritos. CBS Studios president uh, David Staff released a statement saying, quote, Lower Decks and Strange New Worlds are integral to the Star Trek franchise, expanding the boundaries of the universe and exploring new and exciting worlds. We are extraordinarily proud of both series as they honor the legacy of what Gene Rod and Mary created almost 60 years ago. We are so grateful to work with Secret Hideout, Alex Kurtzman, Mike, uh, Mike McMahon, Kiva Goldsman, Henry Alonzo Myers, and the cast of crew and artists who craft these important and entertaining stories for fans around the world. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you a fan of uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds and Lower Decks? Let us know. And now on to our next topic. And now we're going to play some games. We're going to start with the uh, lifetime stats. This is pretty much, we want to know for you, what would be some stats that you would want to end your life with? For me, it would be total number of videos uploaded on YouTube. Uh, I'd really like to see, like, by the time I finish my life, how many videos have been uploaded. Because if you think about it, if you do it constantly and full time, you could upload like plenty of videos a day. You could end up with like millions of videos by the time you die. Not even including recording while you're in your 80s. But another one is, uh, for me, it'd be, uh, I don't play basketball much, but uh, I would want to know the total number of baskets made while sh uh, shooting hoops. I mean, I don't play a lot, but I do play some, and if uh, if there's a hoop around and I got nothing else to do, I'll go shoot some hoops. Uh, another one I would do is I'd want to know the number of times I've came close to winning the lottery. I mean, like, you know, we look at the tickets, we see if our number is picked, and then we kind of throw it away and forget, you know, what the numbers were. But it would be interesting based on over time of buying all those tickets, how often have you come close? I know for me personally, uh, my family bought a lottery ticket and we were one, what was it? I think it was just one digit off. Like it was like 42 when it was supposed to be 43 for us and we would have won like big money, which sucks, but hey, and that's what happens. And then uh, finally, I would want to know slices of pizza eaten by the end of my life. That could be a lot. I mean, I eat pizza a lot. Excuse me. I do eat it a lot, so it'd have to be a big number by the end of my life. This is one of those things that's like, I buy pizza for major events that I'm watching. Uh, I'll buy pizza if I want to cook. So for me, it's between like, Eating pizza or like getting like fast food, something. It's a 50 50 percent chance of eating pizza on certain days, it's either that or fast food. So I mean, I could end up eating a lot of pizza. And now we're gonna do another game, but this time we're gonna be answering the world's most controversial questions. And this is actually a shout out to the Makeshift Project who came up with some of these questions, which they found, I think, on Reddit or something like that. How many holes are in a straw? Some would say one, some would say two. I'm gonna, I wanna say there's one. As a hole, has an opening and an exit. So that's one. What is the greatest fast food chicken sandwich? So, this is a little harder. You got Popeyes, you got Chick-fil-A, you got 
Wendy's, you got McDonald's, you got I can't remember who makes those. Uh, I have Popeyes. For me, okay, so I'm going to narrow it down between Popeyes. It's going to sound so cheesy because it's a great debate. Popeyes and KFC. And I think... I'm gonna go Popeyes because you have that flavor in the chicken sandwich as opposed to KFC. KFC is kind of you know, tastes just general, kind of like uh, Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A is just breaded piece of chicken, uh, bread. And that's it. I think like they give you pickles. That's it. Is esports a real sport? So everybody's got an answer for this. But I'm going to go, so it takes a lot of work to become skilled in certain video games. And that, that's your goal and you get paid for it. Hey, that's great. And then, but, it, but a real sport. Like with video games, it takes uh, concentration and skill to play these. And athletes have, you know, skills and whatnot. So I think you can't really compare it to a, like, let's put up a video gamer against a soccer player or football player. It, I, will, I will say it is a sport, but it's like a, a subcategory of sports. Like you have these, you know, on-field athletes that play sports, which those are athletes. And then you got the Esports that are athletes because they, you know, they uh, practice, they strategize, they work, they're uh, getting better, they practice. So, the next question is Was the moon landing real? People say yes, people say no. Honestly, I'm going to say yes, but I can't really explain why. I mean, Sure, I'll say no because ooh, we've never been back. I think uh, I think going the first time was a key uh, moment for American morale, and I think we just haven't gone back because it's not like a priority, you know. Like we've already been to the moon once, so that's great. What about landing on Mars or starting a colony on Mars or going to another planet? Who knows? And then the next question, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Well, that's interesting. I'm going to say yes, because A, it's during Christmas time. B, you do see snow. And C, it's a Christmas movie. No, it's definitely a Christmas movie. It takes place during Christmas, making it a Christmas movie. Dude, you could have an Ocean's Eleven movie during Christmas time, and that would be a Christmas movie. You could have a, a Schwarzenegger movie during Christmas time, and it's a Christmas movie. Can't get away from it. And now, we're going to have some even more fun, and we're going to rank. We're going to do a tier list rank of snack foods. So starting off, okay, so to begin with, we have S, A, B, C, D, F, or just trash can. S being the best, trash can obviously being the worst. Animal crackers, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with, shoot, uh, would be, they're not great, they're not bad. Uh, these kettle chips, trash can, definitely. Bugles. I do love bugles, so you know what? I'm gonna put that up. That's gonna go B. Uh, checks, uh, checks mix. I'm gonna go. Let's see. I'm gonna go D. Uh, pizza combos. I don't love them. I haven't had them in a long time. I'm gonna go C. Uh, 
Uh, cheese puffs. Eh, trash can. Cheetos. Cheetos, Cheetos, Cheetos. Cheetos is going to C. It's not my favorite, but I'll eat them if they're around. But I'm not going to order like a giant bag of them, buy them, and take them all. Cheez Its. These are good. Uh, I'll have to say A. Like, they are. They are better than animal crackers, better than bugles. Are they S? I don't think so. Did I not put this one up? Chex Mix. That's. That's trash can. So, combos, I think this is the pizza one. And honestly, I'll put them at the D as well. Or, no, not D. Where is it? Really? I thought we had another one. Oh, yeah. Combos. Yeah, that's D. I'll put it in D with it. The other one. Uh, okay. Doritos Cool Ranch. These are good. I'm not a chip guy. I literally just started chips on vacation. Just because I was trying to waste time and I needed something to eat. And there was nothing else because I was uh, still by uh, baggage. So I had to wait to go through TSA and check my bags and all that. I really don't eat chips. But, Cool Ranch, uh, I'll put that at B. Honestly, I guess not bad. Corn Nuts, trash can. Like, I haven't had those in a long time. And I'm going to butcher the brand of these brownies, but I know they're... The, what is it, like Galactic Brownies or something. I've never tr tried them, so I'm just going to trash can them. Sun Chips, oh yes, I'm... Trash can in those for sure. Fritos. 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 That's tough. I'm not a big fan of like. So for some of these snacks, I'm actually going to include the other varieties with them. So like Fritos, I know there's Fritos chili um, flavored fries. So this is going to be standard uh, for Fritos. It's going to be, it's going to include like all flavors. So. Original, I'm not a fan of, but the, yeah, I think it's the chili flavor, whatever it is. Or the barbecue, I think it's barbecue or something. But I'm going to put that at A. Like, I would eat those over everything below that, honestly. Uh, fruit snacks at Welch's, it's F. And they're not horrible, they're not bad. Funyuns. Onions might have to be A. So those are good. Goldfish is trash can. Is it? Excuse me. <clears throat> I want to say trash can, but... I'll go D. It's not great. I don't love them. But I would eat them, like, in the car or something. Sun chip. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sun chips. Trash can. More Cheetos. Pretty much every kind of Cheetos we have, I'm putting, yeah, on C. That's crazy. I don't have anything on this. Jerky. Jerky's going D. Uh, Lay's barbecue. I'm not a chip guy. So. F. Sour cream and onion. Ooh, that's different, though. That's different. Uh, I might. That's going to S. That's S, yeah. Uh, Tostitos. Chips. I think they're just, uh. Tortilla chips. Um, uh, going F. I don't keep those. Ooh, okay. Wow, we might be getting our S's now. Nutty bars, S. Guaranteed, hands down. I will take nutty bars over everything in this list. 
uh, Doritos. I think that's nacho cheese. I want to put that at B because those two Doritos are the ones I would eat. Lay's Classics, Trash Can. Oh, Pringles. The original Pringles, that's an S. Uh, Ruffles. Yeah, Ruffles, you can't pick that as an F. Or S, excuse me, S. Uh, so I can't really see what that is, so I'm going to skip that one. Dude, I cannot see half of this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to skip those two. Uh, goldfish. Put goldfish. Put goldfish right here again. It's D. I think that's Pringles Pizza, which. Eh. Put it A. Uh, let's see. Okay. Pretzels. But I did not like pretzels, honestly. So that's going trash can. Cheetos. He's going to see. Uh, Red crackers. Uh, we shoot Red crackers. We're really. Uh, I'm gonna put that. And it's gonna go see. I'll eat them if I'm hungry. If they're around. Next one is raisins. That's going trash can. And hell no. Uh, Ruffles. Ruffles is going S. Dude, I can't even see some of these. Like, what the hell? Um, so that's the uh, Pringles. I think it's sour cream and onion. So that goes. Uh, that goes S. Uh, let's see. Can't tell exactly what these are, but I know what they are. But they're a trash can for sure. Sun chips, trash can. Uh, Triscuits, trash can. Wheat thins. Uh, a. I think this is pretzels again, so that's eh, trash can. Tortilla chips, trash can. Kettle chips, trash can. Okay. More Doritos. It's gonna go. It's gonna go on a B. Goldfish. D again. And that is our ranking. Okay, so... So, to recap, on our S level, we have Lay's, Nutter Bars, Ringles Original, Ruffle Chips, Ringles Sour Cream and Onion. Then on our A's, we have Cheez-Its, Fritos, Onions, uh, Pizza Flavored Pringles, Wheat Thins. And at B, we have Animal Crackers, Bugles, Doritos, or C, we have Combos, Cheetos, and Ritz. D, we have Chex Mix, Goldfish, uh, Beef Jerky. For F, we have Welch's, Lay's Bar Barbecue, and Tostitos. For our trash can, we got Kettle Chips, Cheese Puffs, Chex Mix, Corn Nuts. Uh, I think they're called Galactic Brownings. I might be wrong. Uh, Sun Chips, Lay's Original. Uh, pretzels, raisins, uh, those things I can't really see, but I know what they are. Sun chips, triscuits. Uh, I think those are pretzels again. Uh, Tostito chips again, and more kettle chips. Let us know your rankings in the comment section below. And of course, thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode. Give us a thumbs up if you like our videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button to be notified of future videos. And of course, if you want to see more content like this, let us know.
And of course, if you want to support the channel, you can visit buymeacoffee.com slash cinema gold. It helps the channel grow, upgrade our equipment, bring in new hosts, and we'll pay them, and one day take this show on the road. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We'll see you next time.